Why, hello there, and welcome back to the Agostino Zinger Show with me, your host, Agostino Zinger. How you doing? How you feeling? Great, amazing. How am I? You know, hanging in there, doing the best I can with the time I have available and with the resources I have to hand. If it's your first time checking out the show via YouTube, make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe, leave me a comment down below. That'd be much appreciated. If you listen to the podcast, have a five star review, a download and a share would be highly appreciate too and of course support via patreon is always more than welcome patreon of comfort is agostino link in the description subscribe for as little as one dollar per month to get one bonus episode of the excellent zinger show it's good for patreon members only on there get in tune get involved don't delay jump in on there today wow wow how you guys been how have you all been hope you've been good hope you've been well I've had a very interesting, somewhat confusing, stressful, headache inducing, panic inducing, fear inducing, hell of a weekend. And why you may ask, why I guess you know you're feeling so panicked and crazed. You know why? Because I thought my laptop died. It rhymes, right? You know why? Because I thought my laptop died. It rhymes, it rhymes, it rhymes, it rhymes. Oh my god. Um so I had a bit of a panic, I had a bit of a situation somehow over the weekend it was not was it wasn't over the weekend let me not lie but a bit prior like i say maybe a couple of months ago my computer started to you know um die on me a few times here and there but mostly because of the charge the battery's basically wasted right i just have to kind of permanently keep the cable in it to keep my macbook on so i have to replace the battery but you know most people that have computers you don't really fix things that need to be fixed until your computer is legitimately dead right you don't fix it before and it's sort of like the equivalent to always pressing later when you get told to install an update so i just put it off put it off put it off and then eventually my computer started to shut down a few times or turn off by itself because it said you know it couldn't boot up properly just loads of things would happen and then over time it just started to take longer and longer to longer and longer to boot up after the login screen so as soon as i logged in it would kind of take ages you know the little bar the little screen the gray screen or the screen with your background would load up and it just take ages to kind of uh, boot up into the desktop mode and um i was kind of nervous and then of course um over the weekend out of nowhere it just stopped going past the loading screen you'd kind of enter your password in and then it just wouldn't go past the loading and i was like oh no i went on youtube of course youtube is a savior I, had to, I went through every single video basically on the first page and went through every single uh technique needed to kind of get my computer back up you know back up and running none of them worked you know opening started booting up in recovery mode resetting ram this doing this to got access in terminal so many things that were way outside of my um comprehension <laughs> sphere I tried and I failed but then I knew there was a voice in my back of my head I was telling me you know you have to do right no i don't want to i don't don't don't, you know i'm gonna have to erase my system and start again i just didn't want to do it because i've got so many you know as most people i've got so many random pictures that i never look at but i always feel that i need them on my computer so many little minor things i'm still missing now like notes and documents and you know especially my uh notes app on my on my computer was always filled with shit that i kind of needed that i didn't really think i needed but i kind of didn't really take care of where i put them i didn't back them up or anything so that was annoying and of course my notes uh my word doc app as well i had a few on the word word pad word note whatever that thing is the notes what is it text edit it's not my text edit yeah i had a lot of text edit windows too that i always had in the background that it's up but i think over the years man i've been a i've been a prolific and somewhat um excessive user of tabs on google chrome and you know i'm a power user on my laptop i download you know a bunch of movies sometimes legal and illegally um allegedly uh, that's what i've heard uh, someone like me might do and then i also have the tendency to just you know push everything i have to the limit and um you know it's pretty it's pretty much representative of my personality right i tend to kind of push myself to the limit both uh productively and sometimes non-productively if that makes any sense you go <laughs> those who know know um so i always tend to kind of do the same thing on my computer and this is now where we're at we're in a position where you know the computer is slowly but surely dying 
and I had to essentially erase the entire thing and start again from scratch, boot up a whole new operating system on the current laptop. So now I'm running on High Sierra. Um, I think that's the highest that this laptop can basically handle. And yeah, man, I have to start from complete scratch, but I'm just happy I have my computer back. And it was a bit, it was a bit touch and go. I was annoyed I had to kind of reset all my settings and um, all my uh, presets on what you mean, no, all the settings, sorry, that I do on OBS when I'm recording this podcast. And of course, when I do my other sort of stuff, I needed to re-download loads of apps. But for the most part, um, it was basically on the cards and it, I kind of run this thing dry. I push it to a limit and it suddenly kind of decided, you know what, enough's enough. We need a change, Agostino. We need a change. And it decided to die on me so that change could come about. And you know what? I'm okay with it. I'm fine with it. Shit happens in it. Um, but I'm just happy it's not dead completely because, you know, that's what I'm thankful for. Actually, I'm really thankful that um, it's not dead because, you know, the last thing I needed during a flipping pandemic is to shell out, you know, close to two grand on a new laptop because unfortunately, 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 the great thing about having a Mac is you have a Mac. Unfortunately, once you get one, it's very hard to then go back and just use a normal laptop, right? You kind of just want it for the sake of it so um i wouldn't have been happy just getting a standard laptop for under a grand or whatever it may be i would have wanted to go get another mac which would have cost me an arm and a leg and yeah it's just not it, it's not necessary to do so during a pandemic but it is quite um it's poetic isn't it right that's something like this would happen during a pandemic i'm sure a lot of people have probably suffered the same fate where maybe they've cut they've, the car that they had has broke down somebody broke into their home it seems to happen that way why is that in life that you seem to always get um you you know uh your worst you seem to go through the worst thing during the worst time it never seems to come around you know usually it's very rare that you have good news and you suddenly step in dog shit it's usually you're having a completely horrible day and then suddenly you know somebody nicks your bike or something right it's always like that they always go hand in hand like misery always comes in two and joy always comes in one usually isn't it joy joyful and uh great moments always are like singular um which is probably the reason why we strive for those kind of things right and we seek it because usually who's who is it um what quote what author is that that said um life is misery but essentially isn't it it's basically our this is why the, that whole stoic philosophy is really popular with a lot of people because it is quite grounded in reality the reality of life is that you're probably going to have more misfortune and bad luck and just you know misery and pain than you are going to have absolutely amazing euphoric time so you have to kind of equip yourself mentally and both mentally and physically to kind of weather those storms because they're going to be many and they're going to be plenty and they're going to come with a high level of frequency right it's just going to come again and again and again so you're going to, have to be able to just be somewhat resilient which is what a lot of people say about um making it in certain industries right i know that for sure in my little scene especially in the whole like streetwear fashion blogging being around creative agency people right most of the people that are just doing that stuff and doing it to a successful level or you know what you deem to be a success and they're paying their bills you know taking pictures and setting up agencies and uh, branding consultancies and all that sort of jazz most of those guys were just the people that just stayed just didn't give up they just hanged around long enough um they kept operating their business long enough kept being the kind of go-to person the most reliable go-to person long enough eventually everyone else sort of like falls by the wayside um and then you happen to be the last one standing and you just kind of strive off the back of that but again that takes a lot a lot of um you know backbone it takes a lot of character it takes strength it takes it takes a lot to just withstand those trials in life because they're going to be plenty in it going to be plenty so i can just uh, i don't know there's a part of me that just assumes people have gone through some really difficult times during covid i can just imagine outside of the usual job thing whatever i'm sure other things has happened along the way you know your house goes on fire like i said before you know your house get burgled all this sort of stuff just happens you lose your wallet we you just taking out your last hundred quid like just you know th like that sort of thing like god almighty give me a break in it um but yeah i'm just glad and thankful that my laptop didn't die um i'm still here still swinging for the fences still doing what i can to make the best of the situation at, at hand mm -hmm. and yeah man that was basically my weekend i spent most of my weekend like <laughs> on youtube looking at videos of how to rescue my hard drive and yeah oh god man it was really touch and go um and then i spent and then i realized 
because I don't really, I don't use social media as much as people. No, I don't use as much as social social media as probably I should, especially considering what I do. I should probably use it more, but I just have bursts. Like I'll just I power use it for like four hours on a Saturday or something. But I don't go on it day to day in it. So um, I did end up spending a lot more time on it when I was obviously with our laptop, and I realized, wow, no wonder people say like it's a you know smartphones are a bad thing because you can just waste so much time on your phone like hours easily right I, I, I don't get me wrong i felt the i felt the loss of not having a laptop even though it was temporary and i kind of had in the back of my head that there was opportunity you know i was kind of 20 percent sure i could get it back so which is enough to kind of not make me freak out but i also realized that wow man you can really lose yourself in your phone completely and i've never really seen that but never really noticed that prior right the kind of um addictive sort of pull it's got on you right it can just you know from youtube app to instagram to twitter to reddit you're just like it's just a continued cycle then you go on safari and you're, it's just choo, 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 choo. and every site has got some sort of link you know you go on a you go on a site like the daily mail or new york post or whatever there's always there's a list of articles top rated articles that everyone else has viewed with clever titles and good thumbnails you click on that it takes you another story you, you read that it makes you think of something else you google it it makes you think of something else and then you go on to it do you know what i mean it just you can the rabbit holes are insane it's just a shame that none of it is actually beneficial to your life in terms of adding anything right it's it's entertainment it kind of whittles the time away and i think if ever there was a time to procrastinate and just not bother about stuff now would be it right but overall it's just a waste of time it's a proper time sunk time time sink time sunk whatever it is right that that, that phrase um yeah bloody hell man i noticed it this weekend so that was a good revelation right try to spend as little time as possible on social what did i do oh yeah the other thing that i did i watched this incredible video by this youtuber called d'angelo wallace who i've kind of only become familiar with in the last year or so because again i've been paying more attention to stuff that's been happening on social um i've got the video up on here so you can see so this is let's go where his eyes are open because that's not cool but that's basically him right so this this kid on social sorry on youtube um he makes these really great long form videos um on various topics concerning you know youtubers and influencers and he's done a really good one called influencer 19 um it's an hour and something long and it's really really good um it's interesting because he kind of essentially breaks down you know his issue that he has with a lot of quote-unquote influencers who have basically taken it upon themselves to do everything in their power not to adhere to any of the rules and regulations concerning covid and gathering with you know groups of people throwing parties all the time going out and just you know completely ignoring the situation that we're living in and just pretending that it doesn't exist and i guess from the outside in it's been interesting to watch isn't it right because you know as most of you know i comment on a lot of comedians and djs and people who have basically made it uh, known that they're trying their best to ensure that they can perform in any way shape or form during the pandemic they're not really taking the virus that seriously or if they are they are kind of undermining its threat and also you know using some sort of backwards logic to justify what they're putting on shows and it's always kind of intrigued me especially like in terms of everything else because it seems like djs and comedians or djs comedians and probably influencers have been probably the only people who have kind of made it their mission to do exactly what they were doing prior during a pandemic, even though whatever they do is the one thing that people say you shouldn't do when you there is an airborne virus that can spread uh, really quickly, right? And that's a big issue with COVID, isn't it? It's the fact that it can spread, it's an asymptomatic virus, right? You don't have to show any symptoms to have it, which means you can pass on to more people. That's the danger of it. And it multiplies really quickly. That's what you hear from all the scientists and shit. So they say, oh, the best way to promote, to prevent people spreading it a lot is to basically make sure people don't gather. So even if you don't agree with lockdowns, you shouldn't be gathering inside insulated places where you know there's not much ventilation um especially without a mask uh during a virus it just doesn't make any sense so but then obviously there's still a window in the fact that you can do stuff outdoors if you have spacing and the whole plastic uh screens thing there's a little things loopholes that you can make so people have been taking advantage of that as per usual it is what it is isn't it if there's an advantage to be taken someone's gonna take it um but it's just interesting considering like i always think about like you know the Arctic Monkeys probably haven't played a show in front of fans in what, 
months if not a year probably right since the lockdowns happened or since sorry covid has spread but so far you know nearly just about every dj has played some version of a playgrave some comedians done some version of a show um some influencers have celebrated their birthday in some you know public space or their own home it's just very interesting right there's just a certain segment of the population that i think hmm this doesn't apply to me I'm not going to be affected by it. And D'Angelo Wallace does a really good job of sort of charting it. I think he breaks it into three categories. It's basically, um, if I'm not mistaken, it's like TikTok stars, influencers, and YouTubers, or celebrities, whatever. It's one of them, yeah? Celebrities, TikTok, and YouTubers. And he does it really well. He covers the entire gamut from like, you know, what? sometime i think i'm gonna say maybe his earliest culprit might be august of last year or something right he really kind of covers the entire breadth of the issue that's been happening and <sighs> i wonder if a positive to come from this because you know we all know what's bad you know okay you shouldn't be going out bloody blah it's a tired argument but i wonder or it's a tired uh take i wonder if this will actually be a net benefit for society that will finally get over this fascination and sort of obsession with celebrity in the first place and looking for looking at them as some sort of um i don't know moral ethical compass of any sort i always think about whenever i think about these things it always comes to mind like cardi b sitting down with bernie sanders i never understood that it's a very american thing it's not very something they're doing much in europe um because we probably see through it a lot more uh but it's very odd that that was a strategy right in order to kind of what get the vote of who like what is that going like it just didn't make any sense right but th that's the fact that's the currency of celebrity it's so high that they just think if they put these two people in front of a screen it's somehow going to resonate with us the viewing public that we're going to think oh wow cool i should vote for bernie because that girl that i like who makes great music or who i like her style likes him so i should like him and then bam what you should vote for me i didn't really understand that sort of thing but again it's a common tactic and i guess a lot especially with a lot of these kids most of if you think of the tiktok people they're mostly you know they have mostly um children fans and stuff so that's kind of understandable they're sort of like the newer version of boy band stars or celebrities or disney celebrities without the disney you know stamp of approval um that's completely understandable right i completely get that um they're like the cool kids you know school sort of thing i'm sure if i was under the age of 18 i'd probably be obsessed with these people too um i'm not kind of denying that i doubt it but i'm not denying that that could be a possibility but just the other side of things like the you know the normal celebrities and the youtube influencers who are like you know mostly over the age of 25 and shit i just don't understand how anyone in their right mind would be looking at these people like tana mogo and all these type of people i'm thinking yeah i want to follow your footsteps you're an inspiration to me in what sense like what because she knows how to record videos on youtube and upload them like i did I, it never it always baffled me the obsession people have with these people the obsession people have um over these type of people and just very very odd um and again he breaks it down really well and i wonder if um this d'angelo wallace influencer 19 video is going to be one of those things where we look back on it and think you know what this was a net positive now at least that we know these people don't really care about anything aside from themselves it can it can maybe allow us to sort of live a lives where we're not sort of um obsessed with their every move or living our lives vicariously through them right maybe that's what because i think he looked at an example i think he showcased the example of the kim Kardashian birthday and all this sort of stuff and it's like you know i, I don't know if people just kind of maybe it's because people just conveniently forget and try and suspend reality and they forget how affluent and you know straight up rich these people are and now they're just nothing like you whatsoever just because they have a break down when they have a zit on their head or they cry when their boyfriend breaks up with them it doesn't mean they like you at all do you know what i mean they might have normal human emotions but they don't go through any of those struggles you do whatsoever and it's just maybe covid has exasperated that and exposed it for what it is exactly you know a charade you know a, a facade sorry a complete hoax of a situation to kind of somehow um imbue relatability when you are essentially like you know that kim Kardashian thing was a wild and she flew all her friends to a private island got them to quarantine for two weeks either side of the birthday party got them all tested private catering everything obviously it's things that you would do if you had her kind of wealth right if you had that kind of access why not and documented and shared it and of course prepared like a statement you know explaining why she did it but 
it's just like god damn it man like we get it right we get you have your wish and your world but you need to kind of constantly remind us and that's the kind of thing that's always really interesting like why are you showing us like we this is this is gonna do nothing for us whatsoever it's mostly just a flex and a kind of like no i need to document this i need to get this up on my social i need to have record of this evidence that i've done this sort of thing and i guess the viewing public just has to kind of digest it and you know look at their one bedroom apartment and just shrug and keep it moving i guess in it but honestly i really recommend you check out the d'angelo wallace video influencer 19 it's really really good um don't get me wrong he can get a bit hysterical with the whole like you know every time you step outside someone's gonna die thing um but you know i can understand you know people have different opinions about the threat of covid but in general documenting just how different other people's covid experience has been it's been interesting because you just know when the world reopens these are the same people who are going to be like oh my god it's so nice to be outside right when they've been outside the whole time <laughs> which is really funny it's like the the dj post um that you saw of um who was it emily lenz or somebody right she was that like, talking about oh um i've not played in ages and then there was a there was a post of like her playing the all these parties in paris during the summers like, what are you talking about you just played a couple months ago uh, um but yeah definitely check it out the angela wallace influencer 19 on youtube really really good video really really good video um what else do we have here to talk about do, 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 do oh yeah this is pretty shocking so this is a report from this is a report from cbs new york right and i guess i guess what do i guess i don't guess anything yeah this is what i guess so obviously i've been covering some you know troubling uh instances in dance music and in music in general concerning the treatment of women right and it's obviously opened my eyes to a lot of things that I didn't know was happening because I'm just oblivious to stuff. I'm just going out, number one, to listen to music, to watch DJs perform, to catch a vibe, have a dance, sweat it out, you know, make friends in toilets and go home, right? I'm not really looking too deeply into these situations, but obviously through like some of my experience promoting raves and people that I've spoken to in the scene, I definitely know that there's an issue, right, that exists there with uh basically anyone that isn't male right they have an issue with how nightlife is basically um promoted how it works how they're treated um you know the spaces they're allowed to exist and not exist it's just an issue and i've kind of kind of come across well what what i've taken from this is like naturally it's just a kind of consequence of nightlife basically really right there's just it just attracts really ugly people right people that you probably wouldn't ever want to cross paths with in any way shape or form but unfortunately you know nightlife most of the times just you know uh pulls these people out and i then pulled and then i think i made reference to another topic about me just thinking oh there must be something about when it just goes dark outside that it brings out the devil in some people and it just you know they turn into monsters and then of course when you turn into a monster you look for weak targets right quote unquote and those weak targets are probably going to be women they're probably going to be people who maybe identify with the lgbtq community so it's no coincidence that those people are the most um, marginalized and attacked right when they come outside in that respect um and it's really abhorrent right there needs to be more attention brought towards it. it needs to be more safe spaces and things to be done i don't know what needs to be done but definitely there needs to be more attention kind of being shone on this issue and none more so than this really really tragic story which is obviously um i think hopefully gonna reach a happier conclusion because i read a report that one of the guys got arrested recently but a story from uh, cbs new york about a woman who basically went to go buy a bottle of wine late at night before she went to meet friends or something um gets uh accosted or sort of like spoken to by some guys in the bodega she politely turns them down and then you know subsequently they decide to assault her one of the people ends up biting on her forehead or some shit and she suffers some horrific you know physical and mental injuries all because she didn't want to engage them in their uh pursuit of talking to her in a you know relationship sexual manner whatever it may be and it's just a really really stark reminder as to the plight of women when they're outside at night like legitimately like this wouldn't happen to a dude of course in any way shape or form but you know like just imagine how scary that must be as a situation popping into your local bodega 
you know that you probably go to quite often right especially if you live in the area you have a couple of offices that you go to and off licenses and you a place you go to her buy some stuff and you might even see these people these kids or these guys more often than not you feel like you have a pass in your local area because you feel safe there they're not going to do anything dumb here because you know you can spot pick them out instantly you'd imagine that right you'd think and then this situation happens so let's play the report of it and then obviously i'll give you my side of it as we continue the NYPD is looking for the men who allegedly attacked and robbed a woman trying to buy a bottle of wine in Harlem. CBS News' Lisa Rosner now with more for us this noon. Lisa? Well, Chris, this happened just before 6 p.m. Monday. Witnesses tell me the woman was alone in the store and being hit on by men inside. It was when she walked outside when the trouble started. Surveillance video shows two men walk inside chatting and laughing. Police say they started talking to a 31-year-old female customer looking to buy a bottle of wine. Police say she rejected their advances inside the store on West 128th Street near St. Nicholas Avenue. But when she walks out, you can see the two men follow and others also appear. Police say they kicked her multiple times and one even bit her on the forehead. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. The intrusion. The intrusion, I, I mean, she wasn't doing anything no. but trying to buy something for herself. I heard the commotion, I heard all the screaming. So, cause I live right around the corner. I saw the little blood on her face. Police say the victim suffered a bite mark with broken skin to her face, pain and bruising, and was taken to NYC Health and Hospitals Harlem in stable condition. Police say the men stole her iPhone 11 worth around 750 Jesus bucks Christ. and ran away. The incident is upsetting to people who frequent the area. If you ignore God, then they'll be like, you're rude. But it's just like you don't want to talk to them, so you keep walking. But then it shouldn't turn out to an altercation. I hope they find them. And, and they can have justice for the young lady, and I hope she's okay. This happened just before. So obviously, you know, clearly an abhorrent crime, in it? And I don't know, man. What do we have to do? I guess raise better men, um, call out each other. Because again, I, I don't, I don't think this is a isolated incident for sure. Guys like this have done something similar, maybe not to such an extreme. Um, to others but it definitely is a question of if you're a dude and you have friends like this in your circle you definitely have to pull your friends up to the side and say hey that isn't cool um you have to you know maybe even break ties with people like this there's no uh, in my opinion personally there's no saving a guy it's a guy who thinks that it's an adequate response to decide to assault a young lady because she turns down your advances isn't somebody you can save in terms of changing their opinion on how they view women and you know um how they react to certain situations there's just something about these kind of uh nonsense dudes who just somehow feel as if women owe them a response owe them a conversation um they feel like entitled to be in the same space as people right it's just a very bizarre pov that i've never really truly understood i've seen it myself i've seen guys you know react very angrily when a girl turns them down and i know like as a dude right i know it can be a very embarrassing and somewhat uh it can be very embarrassing and emasculating experience when a woman turns you down because usually it's done either really kindly or it's done really abrasive so you can get the message and fuck off, right? That's usually women's two approaches, which is completely understandable, right? Because I guess if a woman's um, used to doing it the softly, softly approach and keeps getting rudeness back, she's just not going to cut you any slack. Like, go away, jump off a bridge. I'm never going to talk to you in a million years. Maybe worse than what I'm saying because women have a very great way of using um, short amount of words to really penetrate your soul so you clear the message clearly you know it's very rare that guys can say honestly that they don't know what's up with a certain girl you know what's up with certain girl when it comes to you because they've let you know unequivocally that they're not interested so if that's the case you just have to take the l and keep it moving and i think most guys who are um fluent in the language of seduction fluent in the language of attraction understand that there's very little you can do when somebody says no it's just a no right whether or not they come back next time and they say hey i've changed my mind take me young man it's another situation but in that moment once they've said no there's very little you can do to change their mind so you just take the l and you continue moving because the last thing you want 
is for more attention to be brought your way so people to realize hold on did he try to pick her and she didn't and now he's still standing there arguing you're gonna look at such a chump so you don't want to so it's mostly a shame thing you don't want to feel embarrassed so you just kind of run away or you make an excuse and leave or whatever it is that you do right you don't want to um, make the situation any more awkward and embarrassing than it is but i guess for some of these guys they probably don't have an aspect of shame it's more so they feel like they've been what their masculinity has been called into question or they have such an inflated sense of self that they generally they're generally taken aback when somebody shatters their reality and says you know what you're not that cute i'm not into you but still again angry response is one thing but then going to physically assault somebody again the angry response shouldn't even be excused because it's it's insane but people are dumb in it people are crazy people do crazy shit and they react in weird ways i you know whatever angry response shout scream say what you want oh you're not even cute anyway the standard trait okay yeah sure i'm not cute but you can't to speak to me but the going over to assault a young lady especially on her own is cowardly and extreme like what points are you regaining there so what they nicked her phone and then what's going to happen there like what are they high-fiving each other when they get back to their homes oh yeah look we really told that girl and she you know she tried to turn us down make it seem like she was better than us and we took her phone we really showed her like what are you doing and again guys from their look <laughs> there used to be a thing back in the day right where boys from the hood or boys from the ends especially in the uk you sort of took it upon yourself to look after people right especially people that were actually on road doing bits right it was kind of um the gangster in you was that you looked after your local community right no one could come to your area and beat up your kid beat up the boys in your area beat up the girls in your area you took it as an affront and you'd go and seek those people out to get retribution right no one no one um was hurt in your area especially by your own people but i don't know what's changed in recent years where like you know these guys like take it upon themselves to take advantage of people that live in their own very community right you're meant to be making it a safe space for the people that live near you because you know what they're going through right you both live in the same buildings you both live in the same apartment blocks projects whatever it is you're going through the same struggle there should be some sort of thing bonding you together especially during this time you'd imagine isn't it but i don't know man maybe it's the starvation maybe it's a lack of stimmy stimulus checks whatever it is it's not not inexcusable and you know it's great to hear that i think the development is that one of the guys has been identified as pretty obvious who these guys are into to local residents in the area it's going to be a question of whether or not you know people can um muster up the courage to come forward and say stuff but hopefully the message has been received i think for the most part i think if you're somebody from their crew you're definitely not gonna want to co-sign that sort of behavior because it's not on again it doesn't matter what she did she could have spat on them she could have kicked them in the nuts like biting a woman and stealing her phone because she turned you down is never an adequate response in any way shape or form um and again another illustration and that th this is why sometimes i really find it funny when guys get offended when some girls are like oh um you know uh, they act really weird and spooked out and you know run up or go across the other road when a guy's walking behind her they don't know this is why you know people get offended and think oh yeah she's doing that because i'm black because i'm a guy because i'm big blah, blah, blah. it's like nah mate she can't take any chances right she weighs like i don't know eight stone do you know what i mean like it legitimately if you decide to take her and do you know and do something heinous you could do it she has no recourse she can't really fight back so the only thing she can do is prevent that altercation from taking place and why should she take a chance and hope that you're a good guy she doesn't know who you are do you know what I mean that's the, that's the sad part of it it sort of kind of reaffirms every woman's worst fear that this could happen to them and again um hope the girl gets better very soon tragic story but again um the latest news so far is one of the dudes have been caught hopefully more get caught in the coming days and we can kind of put that situation to bed because no one wants to see that sort of stuff man it's just it's just terrible and it? it's just really, really terrible but again we move we move we move um this is a story courtesy of bbc another example as to people's hell-bent desire to gather and party right this is a video it says covid man rescued from a legal party on roof in portsmouth now don't ask me how he ended up on the roof um don't ask me if the party was still on as he was on the roof regardless there's a cherry picker here in the video and a guy on the roof of a house <laughs> staring into the lights let's play this video from the bbc and i'll read the annotations as we continue on 
Uh, it says here, a reveler had to be plucked from a rooftop after a legal party. Put the sound on. Emergency services were called to break up the gathering uh, at a holiday let in St. Chad's uh, Avenue, Portsmouth. See what people are doing, bruv. They're booking holiday lets to throw parties. I guess they're doing them in random smaller towns because they think the police aren't going to be on job. I don't know, but it's just funny. Uh, 19 people were fined £800 each for breaking COVID lockdown rules. Jesus Christ. One person was brought down from the roof by firefighters. Also, I guess they tried to escape when the police come and tried to hide on the roof. But then, you know, the police looked up and what's that noise? <laughs> Spotted him. <laughs> oh, shit. It's actually two men were also arrested. Legitimately a cherry pickle. It's bright lights getting this guy down off the roof. Oh, it's hilarious. Police said the gathering was a blatant breach. Um, of lockdown regulations aimed at keeping people safe there is something about us humans in it with our desire to just be around each other right there is something about it we're social beings we just can't help it people are willing to get fined 800 pound each during a lockdown to go to a party that shows you that we just this lockdown thing is doesn't work man long term it really doesn't you have to do those kind of like um snap circuit breaker type techniques that australia new zealand did right and even that you still have to close your borders you have to do a lot of things to kind of make that thing work but the only way it sort of works is really strict or just none at all but you just can't do it for a prolonged period of time and think that's going to be your, your approach because people will eventually just break out and decide you know what enough's enough i'm gonna to go to a party i'm gonna go rent a flipping house in portsmouth to go for a rave and people were willing to go there. I'm sure. I'm assuming there was a lot of people that were traveling out of town um, to this location and were willing to get fined in order to party. That's how much they went to be around strangers. And I bet you, for that brief hour, two, three, four, they had partying. They must have felt so alive. It must have reminded them of all the good times they had in pre, you know, in other events that they went to in the past, post, uh, in pre-COVID era. And then, you know, when the police come, the stream gets shattered, but at least they have that memory to hold on to. It kind of reminds you of, you know, when you're younger and your mum and dad wouldn't let you go to the house party, but you went anyway. And then when, on your way back, you knew you were going to get beat, but you didn't care because you got a wind. You're able to feel up on the guild bum somewhere in a corner whilst you're listening to flipping um, Elephant Man or some shit, right? You got your first buzz on, you had your first joint. You don't care. You're looking, you're, you're actually looking forward to the, to the beats being over so you can just remember the day more right? you're sort of willing to sacrifice your bum and your hands with a wooden spoon just because of that little wine you were able to grip up you were able to you know rub up on a girl somewhere right have a little cheeky flirt with somebody like i said get get a bit drunk or some punch people are willing to do anything and everything to be outside it's really interesting man it really really is you know, DJs are traveling halfway around the world to go and play a rave, knowing that they're going to get absolutely destroyed in the comments, but they're still going to do it anyway. They don't care. Do you know what I mean? They want to be in front of people. Now, again, that's maybe a, you know, um, a narcissistic, sociopathic sort of thing. You know, the need to be in front of people and have the adulation of the crowds looking at you. I think back to that Adam Bayer video that Business Teshno, you know, uploaded of that fan coming up to him and kissing his hand like he's a deity, right? That's a bit odd. But in general, there's still something fundamental about the human um about humans in general, right? That we just want to gather in place with strangers. And it probably explains a lot of the mindless shopping that occurs in most city centers right people just walking around like drones mind you know staring into the abyss that is a um debenham shop window right they're not you know curious about you know the merchandising they just want to occupy their time and get next to strangers in or be in a proximity of other people they don't know there's something about that maybe it's similar to like the a beehive right buzzing around each other just wanting to be close and you know not so close to the queen but close enough to everybody else right it's just oh, i don't know there is something about it it definitely is part of our human condition and this might have to play into a lot of the next 
procedures that come into place and maybe some other reviews with how we dealt with COVID in general, right? This might be something that they need to think about. If you are going to, you know, if there is going to be another sort of viral virus that spreads across the world, which, you know, judging by history, there's definitely going to be more, there's, you know, ha you know, it happened in the past. Why would it happen again in the future? You have to change your approach when it comes to dealing with it. Like, you know, l lengthy lockdowns just don't work really, you know, for the economy and for people in general, it just does not work. And I think, you know, a guy willing to risk his safety, um, his health, um, and his finances so you can rave in a party in Portsmouth it's just insane isn't it but definitely just to explain how desperate people are these days man desperate times call for desperate bloody measures I'll tell you that one I'll tell you that much next on the list we have optimistic news courtesy of Boris Johnson this is from the BBC it says Boris Johnson is optimistic that summer holiday prospects um concerning you know the UK and when we're going to come out of lockdown so it's good news isn't it right as headline I think what it does show I think in general is that I think as bad as this government has done with the uh how they've dealt with COVID and with the lockdown and the economy and supporting people in different industries I feel like they're finally the penny has dropped now it's taken you know 100,000 plus people dying which is abhorrent to say listen people should be punished um once this is dust is settled people should be pulled up on and reminded of the gross negligence and incompetence that probably led to this situation but there's no denying that they've definitely learned from this and i feel like they're purposely um they're purposely sort of dumbing down or not dumbing down they're, they're purposely dampening um the hopes of whatever's happening in the future just so that if the news does get better they can announce it and kind of use it as a tactic to kind of distract people from all the mess that they've kind of done because i think before they did kind of over promise under deliver so now they're under promising in the hopes that they can over deliver down the line which is basically in my opinion it's a better approach especially considering people's covid fatigue right people are fed up with fake promises empty hollow words they want to just know when they can get back to normal they don't care about all this you know um as some they don't care about the generalization of it they want clear dates of when they can go back so this is courtesy of bbc it says the following duh, 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 duh. prime minister boris johnson says he's optimistic people will be able to have summer holidays this year um asked about tourism in the uk he said he did not want to give concrete dates for such trips but would not be set more uh but would be set more out details on 22nd of february that's when he's going to announce that kind of uh, plan as in when we would actual concrete dates, which is insane to think that only in February 2021 do we finally have a plan that sets out exactly how we're going to get out of COVID. Prior, it was just like, if the numbers are down this week, then we might loosen up the tiers and you might go down one. It was never like an actual plan of like, when do we think we can kind of get out of this? Which is kind of led a lot of people to believe that the plan overall from the beginning was always herd immunity. And they were just lucky that the vaccine was developed, you know, in record time but we were still going to be you know in a very bad situation further down the line if, if the vaccine didn't come around so it continues that the success of the vaccine rollout and the level of covid cases would be factors taken into consideration nearly 9.3 million people in the uk have had their first dose the vaccine was offered to all uh, all older residents eligible in care homes in england and nhs and announced earlier so again good news for most of us going forward um i'm I'm again like I think that most people man I'm just over this I kind of want to get back to life as it was prior and if that means you know that's the summer of this year say la vie if it means it's the winter of this year say la vie just let me know when I can get back to normal you know all these sort of like speculative dates that have been set out are just you know null and void and a bit of a waste of time for everybody the quicker they can just kind of get the dates sorted out get a plan in place and let everyone go back to normal the better it is for all of us Ooh my nose hairs are always getting in my nostrils and then everything else but hey what can you do anyways let's move on what else do we have here da, 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 da. oh yes another one Cursed BBC, a, co a Preston gym owner remains open despite lockdown ban um I'm surprised there's not more of these stories happening especially in London considering how uh, many gyms we have here and how many gym goers we have here um it's not been a thing i guess pressure's sort of been taken off of the gyms in london because a lot of the people who are you would quote you know uh workout influencers have probably decided to 
move abroad and go to bali and dubai and all these kind of places so they're basically not really pushing these places as much as they should be to kind of being open and and maybe just they just don't want to the hassle of opening a gym now especially and getting fines and stuff and all the negative press and stuff it's just not worth it but um it's good to see somebody standing their ground you know as destructive as it may be in the long run i do think in general um like i said prior like i just think this lockdown approach has just been proven to be um ineffective especially the way that we've done it there is a way to do it properly but i just don't think we did it properly and it wasn't really a plan in place there was a lot of hysteria around the numbers and um there was probably uh not there was it was probably not it, it, yeah it was probably not taken as seriously as it should have been in the beginning and then it was taken too seriously when the kind of the horse had already bolted and we were trying to kind of rein it in it was too late by then um so i just think it's a combination of things but um again like i said i think the gym thing has been a real eye-opener for me because i didn't know again i guess most people are like this right um i didn't know how important it was to my overall well-being and how it kind of framed my week right i'm i'm a i'm a i'm an ardent go out right i go out to a lot of raves right a lot of parties on the weekend but there was not a week that went by that i would ever miss a monday gym session a tuesday gym session a wednesday a thursday a friday and then i go on a saturday it kind of gave me structure it kind of allowed me to say okay cool i'm gonna work out monday to friday and i'm gonna get on it on a saturday or something that's what it allowed me to do and now without it my week has no real structure unless i'm working right there's no real idea of like is this a monday is this a tuesday is this a wednesday they all kind of just blur into one another and um it's again it's maybe concerning because it maybe is a opening um a revelation maybe kind of reveals my uh lack of interest i guess outside of uh many other things that i do but i still think it's um a real stark reminder as to the things that you shouldn't take for granted and how much actual benefit they bring to your overall life and again i don't go to a trendy gym it's just a local leisure center it's nothing crazy but it does give me you know so much in life and i'm sure a lot of people have basically felt the same and again i do my old press-ups and setups at home i try and run you know three times a week and stuff it's not the same like i said before another podcast like my running has been affected by my lack of gym like i'd go gym five days a week and run three times a week sometimes four because the gym gave me kind of the base level to kind of uh or it gave me the structure to add on these other things on in place but when i'm trying to just work out at home or run to supplement to kind of supplement my lack of gym it's just not working it's not the same no amount of kettlebells at home and you know elastic bands are ever going to replicate being able to you know uh put your back up against a squat rack you know what i mean and, and lift some heavy shit it's not the same thing um and again this prolonged period of time without the gym is going to mean once we do go back it's going to start from such a deficit right you got to work your way all the way up to the beginning um and i'm definitely gonna do that because the last time i didn't and i ended up <laughs> i ended up pulling my back i ended up pulling my back really badly so badly that i couldn't walk home i was legitimately considering calling an uber but then i managed to muster up the strength to kind of turtle walk my way back home i think i pulled it going down in a squat i basically hadn't loosened up enough and then i guess my hips and ankles were a bit tight so whatever side that was not whatever side my ankle mobility was the worst it's all overcompensated for my right it happens a lot in weightlifting whenever your, your your mobility isn't even you end up overcompensating on the other side and then that led to one of the muscles on the opposite side of my back straining and i got a pull like a tear and it just it just pain like you don't realize how often you use your back and your waist right it's just such a uh it's a place that moves often whenever you're just moving in general and i was in so much pain man i had to even sign up to some service called urban it's like this um is it urban i think it's called urban yeah it's like this at home sports physiotherapist thing right sort of like an uber for sports physiotherapy you kind of log into the account and they basically have a guy come over and he basically you know did all the electromagnetic things and gave you a massage and that, that really helped maybe it was just a placebo because it kind of helped me just to kind of calm down because i was legitimately freaking out like oh my god i'm ever gonna be walking let's walk again even though i walk back from the gym you know you just freak out when stuff happens to your back um yeah man oh, i don't wish that on anybody i really don't uh, but again that was because i spent some you know we spent so much time 
without going to the gym because of a lockdown and then I went back in and I was trying to make up for lost time and you know trying to complete all the weights in one session and boom my back goes so this time around when it does reopen I won't take it for granted that I have the gym and what it gives to my life and the structure it gives me and I'm also going to make sure that I start from a low weight and slowly work my way up like sort of basically going into it like a novice because we're all spent a lot of time without going to the gym the last thing we need is to kind of give ourselves unnecessary injuries isn't it that's the last thing we need <laughs> oh mate I swear to god man absolute sword slaughter of a situation slaughter but what can you do next on the list what else do we have here what time is it okay let's maybe do a couple more what else do we have here uh, oh yeah let's just do this in it because this is sad um r.i.p r.i.p's are in place man yeah so um r.i.p sophie r.i.p sophie um tragic news over the weekend uh influential groundbreaking innovative creative beyond belief uh artist that probably defies genres but mostly aligned to pop unfortunately passed away suddenly over the weekend a really tragic accident according to the statements put out there um so if he was trying to look at the full moon and slipped somewhere and unfortunately wasn't able to recover from her injuries and um yeah man just uh again i was i was i was actually surprised by how taken aback i was by this loss and how much it affects me over the weekend i guess because i was thinking a lot about you know i was listening to a lot of music during the week um randomly it seems to happen all the time whenever you suddenly stumble upon somebody that you haven't really thought about in a while and then you start listening to the music again i remember watching a lot of interviews i was just you know i was in a bit of a uh, sophie pc music um hole i actually listened to charlie xx charlie xdx um album from last year too which was severely underrated and just you know i was just in that kind of space and then suddenly over the weekend you know this news comes out of the blue i'm like god damn it man this is so eerie and it's always things happen either for the good or for the bad either you you remember somebody who you're a fan of and you start listening to their stuff again and then you hear about oh they're putting out a project you know like, wow that's eerie i was just listening to you the other day or something really tragic happens in this case it's just it's just so premature man like sophie had so much more to give as an artist so so much more and i'm really bummed selfishly because i've never got to see her play live and i think it's always been one of those things that's always been in the back of my head whenever i think my first sort of thing that kind of struck me was when michael jackson died right because i bought tickets to that last sort of like show that was meant to take place in the o2 and then i was in the, i remember the day i was in the tesco express with my brothers you know uh buying some i don't know some biscuits whatever we were doing late at night and then you know randomly some guy comes up to us who we didn't even know and just says oh you just heard michael jackson just passed away he's like what do you know what i mean it's like nah i'm just going literally going to see him next week like what the hell and he's like flipping heck and it just made you think like you know these artists and these people who impact your lives and you know because music is it's one of those things isn't it like I don't know it, it, it's just the impact you don't really notice it until it's you don't really notice it, i guess a musician's impact until they're taken away from you right until they're no longer around and you start to realize fuck man you really like impacted my life in ways that i probably would never understand truly um and i guess in just a purely fan of music side of things you're really especially when you're a fan of somebody you're eager to see how their journey goes and you see this eager to see how they develop as an artist who they end up collaborating with will that project with lady gaga ever come out like you just you're just curious to see what's going to happen isn't it and then when it somebody prematurely passes away especially in a tragic accident you're just like god damn it man life isn't fair especially during pandemic it's just yeah i don't know man. i don't know it's just really affected me over the weekend I, I i was really taken aback by how much it affected me man i couldn't watch or you know listen to much of the coverage i kind of had to skip past a lot of stuff i just had a album on repeat and then went on a whole soundcloud uh discovery and just yeah man it's tragic man it really it's really just, um musician sophie has died um it says here 
The groundbreaking artist passed away in the early hours of Saturday morning in Athens. An official statement provided by Mixed Mag from two Mixed Mag from Sophie's team says the following. Um, it is with profound sadness that I have to inform you that the musician and producer Sophie passed away this morning around 4 a.m. in Athens, where the artist had been living following a sudden accident. At this time, respect the privacy of the family is our priority. We would ask for respect for our fan base and to treat the private nature of this news with sensitivity. Sophie was a pioneer of a new sound, one of the most influential artists in the last decade, not only for the ingenious production and creativity, but also for a message and visibility that was achieved, an icon of liberation. Alongside a statement, Sophie's team um, requested pronouns not used in this article, and we refer only to the artist by name, Sophie. The record label Transgressive that put out Sophie's debut album, Oil, Oil of Every Pearls, uh, and insiders posted a statement on Twitter saying Sophie accidentally slipped and fell while climbing to watch a full moon. That's the statement there from Transgressive. Don't want to read that again. Don't want to get in my feels. Glasgow was selfie released uh, on both labels such as Numbers and Huntley and Palmers. Sorry, Huntley's and Palmers. Uh, and in release debut album Oil of Pearls on Insiders on the Transgressive Records of 2018. The album was nominated for the Best Dance Music Records of 2019. Earlier this month, the duo um, remixed Sophie's 2013 track Bip. Numbers paid tribute to on the Twitter saying the world has lost an icon of liberation. Sophie's experimental approach to pop music and use of vocal modulation to explore gender identity was pioneering. Speaking to people in 2018, Sophie said trans um, transness is taking control to bring your body more in line with your soul and spirit so the two are fighting against each other to survive. On this earth, it can get closer to how you feel and true essence without the societal approach to having to fill certain roles of gender. Sophie Corrett Madonna's 2000 night single bitch on madonna which featured Nicki minaj alongside diplo and mozilla and toby gad and ariel Reshad. sophie was collaborated with likes of pc music founder aj cook charlie xcx and rapper vince staples of the past and yeah man like just tragic and really really tragic news um so much more to give as an artist uh i guess the only benefit to come from this as well you know her music is so innovative and so timeless that it's probably going to live on uh you know for longer than most people i'd imagine um the inspiration that she provided so many people i see on social basically saying that they started producing music because of sophie because it was so unconventional so new so fresh um there was an element that you could do it to yourself right um, but I don't know, man, just as an artist, I just really, really admired Sophie. I don't know what it, I think it was just the, the kind of why it maybe it's a, you know, it's a kind of common thing to say, but the similarity between Sophie and David Bowie, especially considering how manufactured and bland and uninteresting modern day artists are for the most part to have somebody truly just you know startling to look at and the sound was just something so refreshing you just like finally man this is what music is about right you finally got somebody that looks just like some nothing you've seen before and sounds like nothing you've seen before and it just resonates with you right that just the message the liberation you see I, I remember back in the day this is before i wanted to act before i got to really get into music of watching random clips on youtube of her on stage and there'll be mad people just topless just dancing and then you looked at it you just thought that's pure freedom that's pure freedom of expression these people are finally getting a chance to just let loose and enjoy themselves um because this artist has basically provided them with a platform with a soundscape that allows them to tap into their their innermost being right and like she like she said in that quote to connect your soul is it to connect your soul what is it uh transness is taking control to bring your body more in line with your soul and that's what you saw on the stage when you saw those people like you know topless sometimes naked right just losing themselves and you're like wow and that always always resonated with me like anyone that can bring any artist that can elicit that kind of feeling and response from people i take it I, I you know like i'm listening um it's like when you see a, your first death grip show you're like okay cool this is something i've got to pay attention to and you know you see sophie's live shows you're like god damn it this is live in it and i guess in my head i just assume you know again you take your artists for granted like never this would be maybe a message never take your artists for granted whether it's sending them messages via dms on instagram whether it's buying their stuff and 
sharing it on your socials and tagging them however trite and corny and uh, you know whatever it may be do it man because you really don't know when they're going to be around again you honestly don't know don't ever take it for granted like i'm really bothered and annoyed that i didn't get a chance to see her perform live man she wasn't on this uh for long right but the impact is just so amazing man literally literally so amazing you think about the amount of people that have been in, like i think i read a quote and it really reminded me because i think we're all kind of the same age same generation but a charlie xdx quote where she said ah oh, um the impact you know justice and uffy had on her when she was like 14 i remember hearing that stuff for the first time right i remember going to see um busy p playing at the not your arts club like this must have been around the same time maybe earlier um and just being blown away by that sound in it right that sort of um what would you call it electro indie dance uh break beat break is it break bot break bot um all those guys it's just like ugh. and then to see how that sound progressed and then to see like imagine now if you're a kid that's 15 and you hear soapy for the first time like excuse me the sound is just insane it's like no other pop record you've heard before in your entire life um and then again, I imagine for an artist like Charlie XCX, you're probably looking at it thinking, you know, there's not a lot of you around in the industry and you finally bump heads with somebody like an actual artist who's an actual artist, right? And you're just in awe. You're like, wow, this person's insane, right? This person's like a force of nature. I need to stand beside you. I need to just absorb whatever it is that you've got inside you. I need to tap into it. We need to become friends. We need to collaborate. And then, you know, I, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's just gutting, and I guess again, like I said, music lives on uh, far past our physical bodies. So that's probably one of the only benefits to come out of this. That you know, there's a probably loads. There's a body of work that Sophie probably has in archives that's probably going to be released um, later on down the line. That's definitely going to be able to mend some of the wounds left there. But Jesus Christ, man! Yeah, what a horrible way to start the the year, but maybe again a reminder like i said to just not take your eyes for granted and don't take it for granted because you never know how long you're gonna have them around you never really know you never never know anyway um it's not the best place to end the show but you know it is what it is um r.i.p sophie and yeah thoughts and prayers go out to all her close family and friends you can just imagine you know um how they're feeling during this time and god damn it um but yeah that was the Agustin Zinga Show, episode number 428. Thanks so much for tuning in as per usual. It's been a pleasure to have your company. Um, it's your first time. Check out the show via YouTube. Please make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe, leave me a comment down below. If you're listening via the podcast app, of course, leave me a five-star review. And of course, share the show to all your family and friends. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Take care, be safe, and stay out of trouble. Peace.